In this video, we're going to talk about formal proofs and the distinction between statements that are true and statements that are provable. Proofs are done with rules of inference and rules of deduction. We start with axioms and we use rules of inference. This is the traditional approach to math proofs that you're familiar with and that we've used in this sequence of videos quite a few times. What's an axiom? An axiom is a statement that is assumed to be true without proof. So we start with a given set of axioms and we assume that these statements are true and we don't provide a proof of these statements. And next we have a set of rules for transforming one statement into another. And these transformations preserve the truth of the statement. So if we start with true statements, we apply our rules of inference and we get more true statements. Each rule is an algebraic procedure. It's some sort of manipulation. And in particular, we mean it's computable. We can perform these manipulations or these transformations um, automatically with a computer. Okay. And so what is a proof then? A proof is a sequence of statements. We start with axioms and we use the rules of inference deriving one statement from the previous statements in sequence. So it's a sequence of statements starting with only axioms and using only the rules of inference and the sequence of statements ends with the theorem that you're trying to prove. Each statement in the sequence is true as well. And so this is what it means to be a proof. And the trick, of course, is to find the proof. Finding proofs is difficult. And in general, it requires some sort of creative search process. Mathematicians uh, do this uh, for a living. They search for proofs. And once a proof is found, though, each step in the proof can be verified by perhaps a computer. Uh, in, for many proofs, uh, someone else will just look over the steps in the proof and make sure that each step is a correct, valid, legal step in a proof. We want to make sure that the proof is legitimate and that it doesn't contain any errors. If we're doing formal proving, then each step in the proof is a formal theorem, it's a formal statement in predicate logic, and we can use a computer to verify that the algebraic manipulation that was performed on it, the, the rule of inference, was correct. So we have two, two aspects of finding a proof. The first is finding it, and this involves some sort of a search. We, we're looking for a sequence of statements uh, and a sequence of uh, rules of inference that we apply to get those statements. And once we've found the proof, then we need to verify the proof. The first is a creative process, it's a search process, and the second is an automatic decidable process that can be done by the computer. So, how do we find these proofs? Well, we may be working with formal statements in predicate logic, but underlying these, we are thinking about the model, and presumably the the person who is searching for the proof has some intuition or understanding of the model and has a sort of a higher understanding of, of things to guide this search for a proof. And as I said, it may uh, require some creativity. But on the other hand, we might conduct the search automatically. We can just consider the statements in the proof to be syntactically correct logical formulas and we can consider the steps of inference to be nothing more than algebraic manipulations and so the search can also be conducted without any understanding of what the model is so we can have automated theorem provers that can look for a, a proof that can perform this search without any understanding in other words the symbols in any statement in the proof are just that. They are meaningless symbols. So you can imagine proving something 
without understanding what it is you're proving. As long as the algebraic manipulations are correct, then uh, the proof can be found. And you can reasonably ask, is this approach valid? If somebody finds a proof without understanding the model, without really having any understanding of the model, but only doing mechanical manipulations of symbols, is that really a valid proof? And I think the answer is yes, because, I mean, how else can you define what truth means? As long as the rules of inference are agreed upon or, or established as um, how you're going to define proofs, then any proof that you come up with using those is sort of by definition a proof of a true statement. So how else can you really define truth? Let's go back to the twin prime conjecture. Remember that a twin, uh, a pair of uh, twin primes is uh, two numbers that are separated by two and both are prime. And the conjecture is that there are an infinite number of these pairs. And this statement is either true or it's not true. We haven't proven that it's true and we haven't proven that it's false. So we don't know whether this statement is true or false. But the statement itself is either true or false. Okay, we haven't found a proof of it and we haven't found a proof that it's false. But the statement itself, although we don't know whether it's true or false, is either true or false. So let's talk a little bit more about number theory. And um, so we uh, can just fix the universe and the interpretation of symbols and stick with one universe, the universe of natural numbers starting with zero, and the relations that we are used to using in algebra, addition, subtraction, multiplication, less than, equal, and so on. And this is what we properly call number theory. Any statement that you can make that's a well-formed statement of predicate logic using these relations with the meaning uh, that they are normally given and with the underlying assumption that the variables range over natural numbers is a statement in number theory. So we can make statements such as the twin prime conjecture in number theory. And then we can ask about the set of true statements that we can make given this fixed model. This is a language after all. Okay, it's a set of formulas. Some are true and some are not. Which are true and which are not? It's, it's a good question and this is a problem that we can ask about. Which set of, which statements are true and which are not? We can give a name to the set of true statements. So let's consider a particular model um, consisting of, uh, for example, the numbers and the uh, addition and multiplication operations. And we can then talk about, relative to that model, the set of statements that are true in that model. And we call that the theory of M, where M is the model. Okay, and we can write it this way, the theory of M. So this is a, lang this is a set of those statements that are true in this model, in this interpretation. And let's look at an example of this. Let's uh, confine ourselves to what we call number theory. Our universe is a set of natural numbers, and we're concerned about the operations of addition and multiplication. And um, that's really all we need. And the set of true statements that we can make using these, we'll also have equals. Okay, this is what's called number theory. Any statement we can make with these operations is a statement of number theory. And we can talk about the theory of this model as the set of all true statements that we can make using these symbols. Now again, notice that this is not necessarily the set of statements that we can prove. Okay? It's, we have, we're talking about different things here. One is the set of statements that are true, and one is the set of statements that are provable. Okay, the statements that are provable we prove with axioms and rules of inference. 
So we're asking about, we want to ask about the relationship between the true statements and the provable statements. Now one interesting result is that if we limit ourselves to making statements in number theory using only addition, that is we don't use multiplication at all, then the set of statements that we can make, the set of true statements, is decidable. Okay, we can decide whether a statement is true or not. So uh, we can express that this way. The theory of numbers using addition is decidable. I'm not going to prove it here, but I just state this theorem that given a statement using addition, there's a procedure to tell whether or not it is true. And so we can find out whether it's true or not. So here's an example. Uh, here's some, some statement, a bunch of variables for all x, y, z, a, b, c. If x plus y equals z and x plus x equals a and y plus y equals b and z plus z equals c, then we can infer that a plus b equals c. Um, and uh, this, this sort of hints at how we might have a procedure to verify that this statement is true. We can actually uh, use algebra, algebra to sort of conclude that if these things, this and this and this and this are true, we can show that this must be true. So there is a procedure to tell whether a statement like this is true or false, and the set of true statements is decidable. Next we'll look at uh, number theory, but we'll add in multiplication to make full number theory, and we'll get some uh, very different results.